Hi, everyone, and welcome to Cassandra Lunch number 75. Today we are we have uh, Isaac. He's uh, one of the newer members of the Anant team joining us. He's a junior software engineer here, and he's going to be presenting on getting started with Datastax Enterprise on Docker. And the co-organizers for this event are Raul Singh, Arpan Patel, and myself. Sorry for the noise of my dog in the background there. Um, and we are always looking for members, speakers, and sponsors. So if you or someone you know uh, would be interested in, in speaking um, or attending or even sponsoring an event like this, uh, definitely reach out to one of us. Our emails are listed there at the bottom. We are a part of a larger community. Data Community DC is a diverse and inclusive um, organization, and we support people of all races, gender, sexual orientation, religion, everyone's welcome here and we expect respect to be given. Again, apologize for the background noise of my talk. Um, you can learn more about Data Community DC at their blog, as well as their upcoming events. And what we cover here at Cassandra Lunch is everything related to Cassandra, which includes data stacks, Spark, Kafka, so everything in the ecosystem. And at this point in the introduction, if anyone is new, they can feel free to unmute themselves and share their camera. Um, I'm just going to move on, but if I hear you, I'll stop for you. Group rules, if you have a question, please ask it. Be polite and courteous to others and share what you know. This is meant to be a discussion. Um, Isaac can go over his ground rules of how he'd like questions to be asked to once he takes over. And here to not, we deal with Cassandra and real-time platforms all the time. We are the Cassandra experts. So um, if you have any issues related to it, uh, definitely, definitely come contact us first. Uh, Datastax is a, a partner in this, as well as George Washington University and some of the other program sponsors, as well as organizational sponsors are listed here. And 15 second announcements, if anyone has any jobs, meetups or hackathons coming up, they can use this as an opportunity to promote that. No, I don't see anyone new, so we'll move on. One, one announcement from Anant is we are always hiring full-time or part-time positions for data platform operators, engineers, and architects. You can learn more at careers.anant.us. And some upcoming events, uh, we have actually joining us today, uh, Aaron Ploetz is going to be presenting next week on tombstone mitigation strategies. So looking forward to that, Aaron. Uh, we also have Connect to Datastax Astra via standalone CQLSH, as well as deploy, deploying Cassandra using DSC operator to Kubernetes. Um, the sister lunch to this, Data Engineers Lunch, takes place every Monday at the same time, also an online webinar and all of our events upcoming are listed at anant.us slash events. All of these videos are uploaded to YouTube. Uh, so be sure to check out our playlist. Um, these are all live streamed to YouTube as well. So if you're joining us on YouTube, uh, thanks for happy to have you and make sure to hit that like button. Um, Cassandra link is your number one Cassandra resource. Um, as you can see here, there, there are links related to Cassandra, Spark, Kafka. Um, if you're curious about anything related to Cassandra, definitely check out Cassandra Link. These are hand curated articles uh, by Raul Singh and Anant. And anything you could ever want or wish to learn about Cassandra will be found there. And with that, I will pass it off to Isaac. Um, uh, thank you, Josh. Uh, okay, so um, let me share my screen. Um, yeah. So let me know if you can see my screen. Yep, we can. Okay, good, 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 good. So um, I want to welcome everybody to uh, today's Cassandra launch 75. We're gonna be looking at um, getting started with um, data stacks enterprise and Docker. So um, yeah, so today we're gonna be looking at um, why 
data stack enterprise, why it's so, so much um, important, why it is very, very interesting, the packages and the capabilities of um, data stack enterprise. Um, we're also gonna look at the, um, using the DSC search capability that comes with the data, uh, with the DSC, right? So we're also gonna look at um, using DSC analytics, you know, um, with uh, with Spark to handle data workloads. So then at, at the end of the day, we're gonna try to look at um, data stacks enterprise graph, right? So then we're gonna run all these packages on Docker. Then we're gonna look at um, using the studio, the search, then we're gonna bring all this together. All right, in today's um, Cassandra launch. So feel free if you need to, um, if you need a clarification from me, if you need to ask any question, feel free to stop me along the way, then um, I'm gonna to attend to that. Then you can also send your question to the chat, then um, I or any, any member of the team can, um, we're well, going to be able to attend to that, right? So in here we have data stacks enterprise, you know? So why why do we why why do we need data stacks enterprise? So it's it's actually a very, very robust tool um, to when you want to undo transformational um, data architecture, you know, for your applications, for microservices, for you know, for different use cases, right? So, and, and the purpose of this is just to make sure that your data is available at every time. Um, you want to be able to scale higher, you know, you want to have, you want to make sure that your users don't, um, there's no point of failure. Your users are always able to um, access your application um, at every time. So this is, this is super important. This is very, very important, right? So, and data stacks enterprise is built on um, the open source Apache Cassandra. So um, if you happen to know Apache Cassandra, then um, the, the data stacks enterprise is built on top of it. And the, the, the most important thing is they want to make sure that uh, you, you, you are able to work with your data, you, with your applications um, very easily. You know? That's very, very important. So um, third point here, I stated here that um, Data Stacks Enterprise is the world's most scalable database. So um, you can you can be able to you can be guaranteed that okay you're gonna have hundred percent uptime. You know you you you're not gonna have um, the point whereby you're losing a customer, you're losing your users because your application is unresponsive. So that is very very important. Okay. So data stacks um, enterprise, it has the ability to handle, of course, to handle um, massive data. So probably you're, you're getting a lot of data every day, petabytes, you're, you're getting billions of rows you know, per day. So this is actually a good um, technology to look into because um, we, you know, no matter how um, the data is growing every day, um, you are rest assured that um, you have the capability to handle such data, right? So, so one very interesting stuff about this is um, is, a, is a cohesive um, data management platform. So, um, different tools has come together to form this ecosystem in such a way that um, you know there are, there are different problems in data. In, there are different data problems out there. And um, what in the in the, in the past years, what we found out that is we found out that there are different tools that can handle these problems um, very well. Some of them can handle them easily, you know. Some some of them some of those tools can struggle, you know. But um, data stacks enterprise brought in different um, data management um, softwares to manage this. All right. So part of this is the DSC analytics. So um, the DSC analytics um, bring in the Spark, right? So it brings in the Spark because Spark can um, manage and undo um, a lot of huge data. So that, that that's that's one of the strengths, you know. So data stacks enterprise brings in that, and um, 
that actually forms one of the ecosystem. So I also placed here that uh, we have DSC graph. Okay, don't worry, I'm still gonna explain this, um, this screenshot here. So we also have the DSC graph. Okay, so the DSC graph is very, very um, useful in, in a situation whereby you want to handle um, complex relationship between data. So you have your data set, um, but if you look at the data set, you are looking at it as if ah, this data set does not have a relationship between two tables, you know? So that's one of those problems that, okay, in a situation whereby you have a class of students and um, it, it, there's no relationship between the student and the staffs, there's no relationship between the student and the professor. And you, you, want, you want to link those, um, those properties together to bring out an insight. So um, DSC graph is, um, is handy, right? So then we also have the DSC search. So the DSC search is um, in a situation whereby you want to, um, you want to search through your glossary. You want to look for data in, in, the, in, in, your, in the document. So um, DSC search actually helps you to do this easily, all right? It helps you to do this easily. So this screenshot is showing the DSC and um, at the right hand side, um, here I have the nodes, I have the nodes, I have the nodes, and in the node um, installed is the, uh, the DSC server, okay, that contains um, the packages, the DSC um, analytics, this graph, and this search, right? So that's that. All right, cool. So um, let's let's focus on this this slide. So this slide is saying that um, packages and um, capabilities of um, data stacks enterprise. So there are different um, packages and um, capabilities that have been brought together, you know, by the data stacks. Um, uh, company, it, it has been a lot of um, um, a lot of innovations and improvements. You know, so they they bring in data stacks open center because um, this this is actually very powerful when you are looking into monitoring your database. You want to monitor your ecosystem. So this guy is Andy, all right? So we also have the studio, which allows you to interact um, with all the capabilities we have talked about earlier. Then the, the, the data stacks enterprise, you know, is also there, you know. So this, I just showed you this, um, this diagram here to tell you that um, a lot of different um, packages are included in, into the node, okay, into the, uh, should I say the cluster? I'm just using that word actually. So um, DSC search comes in, DSC server comes in, um, up center comes in, Pulsa, Astra, you know, as soon, as soon as there is a need for improvement, another feature will be added. So that's how um, this is going on, right? So, um, yeah. So let's look at the search capability of data stacks enterprise. So um, it allow, actually allows you to quickly find your data. Probably you want to um, have um, a, a search experience for your users. So. Um, the DSC enterprise, um, the search capability helps you to do that, all right? So with, with, with the DSC search, you can easily create some product catalogs, you can do um, documents, repository, ad hoc report, reporting, and um, a lot of different um, interesting use cases, all right? Problem solving um, uh, methods, right? So the, the, the another thing that is very interesting here is um, when you use your DSC search, two things happen. The first thing is that um, you first of all read um, from your database, then um, an index is now performed on top of um, the query, all right? So that's, that's what is going on in there. So, um, but you, 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 you have the ability to be very, very, um, to, to be flexible in such a way that you don't have to, um, write complex queries because um, TSC search helps you to handle that. Okay, so and it, it's actually very interesting in such a way that you can you can do um, you can support your indexing query um, for different uh, data types for your tuple for user defined um, type and all that. So 
um, DSC search is very, very handy, okay? So, um, yeah, okay, cool. So let's let's focus on this um, slide. So this slide I, I stated here that uh, we included the Spark Analytics, and um, this is very, very powerful in such a way that um, with the analytics um, capability, you can be able to um, work with um, each data, database because don't forget that Spark is a distributed um, computing, computation um, engine, okay? Okay, which is um, initially designed, which is designed to run big data. So when you bring that into DSC, um, you get something very, very powerful, okay? Cool, so um, yeah. So some of those features of DSC analytics is that um, you have you, you are able to manage your Spark um, environment, you know, um, you, you are able to do analytics with that ETL. You don't need to extract from different databases and uh, bring into another um, environment. You know, everything is compacted together so that um, you can work with um, those resources easily, okay? So I wanted to look at this, um, the, the diagram here. So this diagram is showing us um, the DSC analytics solo um, orientation. So you can be, you can be able to con uh, communicate with your Cassandra cluster from outside the um, environment in such a way that you, 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 you are managing your Spark um, environment in another um in another cluster or an, another environment, okay? So, and um, you still be able to query your um, Cassandra um, data center and uh, work with the data set in there. So, and that's one of the, 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 the capabilities, you know, you have, you have the ability to, you can also integrate Spark um, into your node, each node that is running the data center. So, um, depends on your use cases and what you want, all right? So uh, okay, cool. Now, the the graph, the what what the graph that I explained earlier that um, you 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 always gonna be faced with at some point your application need uh, are getting some complex data sets and you want to analyze your data set. You um, when you look at the relationship, the relationship does not look uh, very familiar and um, there's no there's nothing okay like there's nothing that joins these two tables together. But, but you know that there is a pattern, there is a uniqueness in those two tables, okay? So, and that's where the, the, uh, the graph comes in. So, DSC graphs is also a database, okay, but it's um, used for um, managing complex um, complex and simple or data sets that, uh, that you need to find relationship of, uh, uh, relationships, um, in, all right, so DSC graph is built on top of uh, Apache Tinkerpop. Okay, so Tinkerpop is also an, an open source um, software, all right, so and it's built on top of um, Apache Cassandra, Apache Solar, Apache uh, Spark, all right, so DSC graph, um, you know, it, it actually uses Apache Cassandra for the scalable storage and transversal. So, um, so just to make sure that you, this, this life is very easy for developers, right? So, and um, for you as an organization, right? Cool. So we are, DSC Graph supports both the transactional and the analytic workloads. So, so you can be able, you might decide that, okay, um, your, your, your data workload needs OLAP, um, working, uh, you know, to, to, to work with the data, right? So you might be in a situation whereby you need OLATP on that, right? Probably you are getting, um, you, you want to work with a limited subset of your entire graph, then OLATP is very, very handy, all right? So, and um, if you are working with a multi-dimensional analysis of data, okay, very complex calculations, you need some complex calculation then the OLTP um, um, analytic engine is, is, is actually very, very, um, very, very okay to handle that um, scenario, right, cool. So what I've been explaining the other time, you know, this is what is going on here. 
So I want you to focus on these basements. So this is what is at the back end of DSE graph, okay? So we have on the, on, on the back end, we have the storage and we have Apache Cassandra. Then at the right hand side, we have index um, backend, which is the DSE search, okay? So which is actually on um, the DSE, uh, DSE, all right, cool. So, and there's a Spark connector that connects um, this, all the um, connection and the exchange connected to the um, graph computer and um, Tinkerbell, all right? So there is, this is the middle layer, right? That serves as the DSC server that communicate between Apache Cassandra, um, the Apache Solar, you know, then communicate with um, Gremlin um, server, you know, yeah, this, this is actually the middle layer, and this is what you see when you're working with the um, DSC graph. This is the, uh, the application layer, which um, includes the web application, the browser, um, also includes the, the DSC studio, you know, Gremlin console and all that. So I'm still gonna show you um, this on, on the DSC studio, right, cool. So today we're gonna be installing probably you don't have uh, Docker installed and you want to work with um, DSC, um, there's no problem. We are gonna install the Docker um, desktop on your machine. You're gonna pull, pull all the images. So for you to work with um, DSC, today we're gonna uh, look at how we're gonna work on it um, using um, Docker, all right? So we're gonna set up DSC search, DSC analytics, we're gonna, enable DSC graph, you know, because we're just gonna enable all these three capabilities, all right? And we're gonna look at going to the, the containers one after the other, then create tables in Cassandra, you know, then um, we're, also, we're just gonna look at assets and create index on the tables, transform, you know, we're gonna transform the tables with Spark, right? We're gonna look at how things are going on with, this, with the Cassandra tables, you know? Then we're gonna assess all our, our work. We're gonna to try to assess them on the data stack studio. So the main motive of this is we want to be able to see how these things come into play, how they, um, they come together, all right? To form the ecosystem, right? Cool. So um, before we go into the demo, do I have any question? Yes, um, I think that has no. Okay, good. So I'm just going to send this um, link. I'm going to copy this link so that everyone can follow along with me. Uh, I'm going to drop it. Okay, cool. So, um, so the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go to, um, we're going to go to the GitHub page where we're gonna follow what is in there. So if you don't have Docker in, uh, Docker desktop installed, um, you, can easily, you can easily go to the, uh, you can easily search for, you know, Docker download, you know, for Windows or for Mac or for Linux, and then you're gonna follow the instruction for the first link, okay? So we're not going to, I'm not going to show you all this because I have Docker installed already. Okay. So now we are going to, after you have, you have installed your Docker, we're going to start um, pulling um, the images one after the other. Right. So um, we're going to try to, we're going to pull the um, data stacks the, uh, distribution of um, uh, Apache Cassandra. So don't forget what I said. I said different applications, different packages um, were brought together to form the ecosystem, to form um, the, 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 the application, right? So um, we're gonna pull this guy, right? So I'm just gonna copy and I'm gonna paste it. Um, I'm gonna open my PowerShell terminal. I'm just gonna paste it, all right? So I already have this installed. So let's wait and see. 
what is going to tell me? Okay, so so it's telling me that the image is up to date, okay, which which we are good. Um, so we're going to go to the next one. We're going to take this. So I already I already pulled these um, images. So I'm just going to copy. I'm going to paste them. Uh, okay. So this is also up to date, so in which we are cool. So we're going to pull all these images, all the images. So we, we put the DSC server, we put this, we put the op center, we put the data stacks studio, which allows us to work um, with the database um, in, an, in an interactive mode, right? So after we've put all the images, we can just, we can go to our PowerShell and say um, Docker images, then it's gonna give us the list of images we've, built, we've uh, put and um, presently I think I have like um, six images, right? So I'm going to go back to GitHub and I'm going to pick this, this uh, link. So this link is going to help us to run our images, okay? Like um, create our container from our images. So, um, so what is going on here is um, this is telling us that I should run this, uh, this images, this image, okay? And accept the license, okay? Give it a name. This is my name, my DDAC. I can give it my name, you know, depending on what you want actually. So then um, run container and detach mode, then um, the name that you want to, the name of the, uh, of the, of the Docker image, all right? So I'm just gonna pull this guy, uh, okay. Um, oh, it's gonna pull this guy. Okay, no problem. Okay, good, 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 good. So now we we might okay. Let's let's pick up this guy. We we'll, we'll let's pick up the up center. Okay. So I I don't want us to go through all the all the um creation and all that because I already have all these already. So I'm just gonna to move to working with the containers, all right? So I'm going, I'm going to copy this link, um, this code, this command. I'm gonna take it to the, uh, okay, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Um, so what we're going to have here is we're going to have the container name and the container name is here. So we have your container name to be data stacks underscore server. So I'm just going to come here and um, I'm going to replace that with this. So I'm just going to say data stacks uh, underscore server, you know. So I'm going to, so what I'm going to do here is I want to go into this container. Okay, so um, I'm going to paste it. Okay, good. So, um, oh, so it's saying it's not running. So we need, we need to first of all run this guy. So I'm just going to start it up. I'm also going to start this guy. I'm also going to start the studio. And uh, okay, so that's, I, I need these three containers for now. So I'm going to start them up and I'm going to go back to I'm gonna go back to my Visual Studio code and um, I want to go into the bash. So I'm just gonna clear the node two status. Okay, so um, I, I guess we, need, we might need to give it some, oh, cool, we are here. So I like to do LS, you know? <laughs> so I'm, going, I'm listing all the files in our container. So what I want to do is I want to look, I want to go into the node two. Status, I want to check for the state of, of my server. Is it up and running? So let's eat. Um, so I'm checking, I'm checking for the status of Cassandra that um that's running on the data stack server, right? So um okay, so this is telling us that it's failed because. I guess the database is yet to be hop, and that's just because we are running it um, just now. So 
Um, okay, so let me do DSC status, DSC2 status, just to know, to check uh, if the server is up. So let me, let's see. Okay, so what, what, let's go back to the GitHub page. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go into the, when we get the response, we're gonna go into SC, uh, SQL SH, that is CQ, uh, SQL um, shell, and we're gonna start um, working with the database. So we're gonna create our ski spaces. We're gonna describe the ski spaces that are in there, right? Just to look, just to list all the the, the databases and the Cassandra. Uh, we're going to um, list all the key spaces in the Cassandra database. Okay, so we're also going to create a table. And um, actually, I, I named I named the table voters. You know, probably you want to create an application for your voters uh, for to make to to perform full you know <laughs> so okay so this is saying um so i think this is yet to start so the the node is yet to start so no problem let's check again so hopefully this is going to be up now so let's go back to the github page so this is going to we're going to insert data into our table right and um, this is the code to, we're going to query our table, you know, using the partition and the column, um, clustering column. Um, so here I only included the partition key. Okay, so then we're going to create a search on the table. Okay, so um, let's check this out. Okay, cool. So we have our cluster running um, presently. So I want to focus on this data center. So in here, I've enabled the search, the analytics, and the graph capabilities. You can see that this is selling, telling us that yes, which means that all these um, capabilities are enabled, right? So in production, make sure you always um, specify enough resources to handle um, the search, the analytics, and the graph, right? Because this is very, very important. This is super, super important. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna go back to the GitHub page. I'm going to copy. So I'm gonna be very fast this time around. Um, I'm gonna paste this here. Uh, so CQL, H, okay. Okay, good. So I'm just gonna go back to the GitHub. I'm gonna copy this guy. I'm going to paste it. Okay. I'm going to describe. I'm going to paste it. Okay. So in our in in our um, data center, we have all the 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 key spaces listed here, right? So I'm just going to back, go back to the GitHub page. I'm going to create a table. I'm going to paste it. Okay. Good. So our table is created now. Okay. Good. So now uh, we're going to insert into the table. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here. Uh, it's complaining. Okay. Uh, what is it complaining? Uh, okay. <laughs> Seems I, I understand what is going on there. Don't worry. Okay. So I guess this is this. Oh, got you, got you, got you, got you. That's what he's complaining of. Okay, good, we are here. So I'm gonna copy this as well. Uh, okay, so this also has this. How? Okay, no problem. So, okay, good. So we have our second line. Let me bring in the third line. You should be able to copy the whole thing um, because it has semicolons. So if you just press enter. Uh, oh, e yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, let me capture this. Ah, uh, but it's gonna 
insert these values. Oh, we have to do this one after the other. You can just copy the last two together too. That's that will work too. Oh, okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I think this guy is also like this. Okay. So I think we have like four four rules right now. So let me just let's just do select star in as much we don't have a lot of rows in there. Um, let's see. Okay, good. So we have four rows. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is um, let's query our table. Let's say, let's query our table. So I'm just going to copy this guy. Okay. I'm going to copy this guy. I'm going to paste it. Uh, okay. So I'm going to replace the ID with one of these. So I'm just going to copy this. Start it here. Okay, let's check that. Okay, cool. So what we are doing here is we are just um, querying the first row, um, a single row. I mean, so and I'm using uh, we're using this the voters ID. Okay, but in a situation whereby we want to um, add the clustering column, so we're just going to say um, I want to add Jackson. So let's say name is equals to um, Jackson. Uh, okay, let's see, okay, cool. So that's actually that we're using the clustering column and the partition key, right? So now let's move forward. Now we are trying to, what we want to do next is we want to create a search, we want to make sure that um, our table has a search capability. So I'm just gonna grab this guy. Okay, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to paste it. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so it's running already. So um, it's creating an index search. Okay, cool. So look at what we have here. So it says, search index successfully created in distributed mode, executed in index, reload, and re-index on all nodes. So if we happen to have more than one node in this data center, then this is going to create a distributed, um, this is going to be created on a distributed uh, on the resources, okay? So, and you are able to search through, right? So, okay, good. So you can also create a search on some numbers on less number of um, columns. So instead of we creating on, the old table, you might decide to pick just um, some selected column and do, do that, All right? So now let's work with our D, our, let's work with the, with, the, with the DSC analytics, all right, using the Spark. So what we're just gonna do is we're gonna go back to this. I don't want to tamper with this. I'm just gonna create another PowerShell and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, okay, I'm going to go in, in here like this, right? And I'm going to say DSC Spark, okay? So notice when we are trying to reach um, our our Cassandra um, shell the other time, we said uh, we just we used the CQLS, um, CL, CQL um, SH, all right? So this time around, we are using DSC Spark. Right, so that we can go into this pack shell, right? So I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna initialize Spark. So this is pre-configured into the DSC server, right? So that's one of the advantages of using this. So because this is configured already, so just you know, um, continue to use it, right? Cool. So now, when we are done with this, we are going to query our database using this. So what we have here is we are saying that um, give us, read this format with this Cassandra SQL um, 
the, the SQL format, okay, give us this key spaces, which is the voting system, right? Then also give us the voters table, right? Then load this, all right? So I'm just gonna grab this. Okay, good. So we're done. This guy is, oh yeah, cool, we are here. So I'm just gonna paste it. And I'm gonna paste it. Oh, I understand what is going on. Uh, oh, got you. So do, do, do this, do this. So clean, no, clean it out, clean out everything. Okay. Go back to your shell, right? All right. Type in colon. Okay. Paste. Oh, okay. Type it in, yeah, enter. Okay, yeah. now paste. Yeah, okay. Paste, go ahead and paste. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm forgetting that. Okay, good. And then do control Z. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, so it's good. Okay, good. So we, we have five more fields now. So um, so we, we, we have been able to connect to the database. Um, Cassandra, and uh, we are we, we now have the data set in Spark, so we can we can now do different op perform different operations. So in here, I just wanted to query when the supporting team when um, all the persons that voted for A, right? So we only have two candidates. So I'm just going to say paste, and um, just going to. Eat this, control D. So it's going to execute this and um, give us the results. Okay, good. I like this. Okay. Right. So now that that's that's actually using the um, the Spark to query our database, right? So, but what of what of the DSC graph? Okay. Now, we are going to get into the DSC graph using this. Uh, sorry. So we're going to get into the DSC graph using the DSC Gremlin console. We might decide, we can, we can check if this graph exists, okay? We can be able to create a new graph with this command, okay? Then we can list all the graphs on the, on, the, on the server, okay? So now let's do this one after the other. Okay, cool, so we are done with this. So look at this. So after we queried our table using Spark, this is what we got. So we got the voter ID, got the city, we have the state, we have the supporting. And don't forget what we said. We stated here that just give us all those people that have voted for A. And um, this is what we have. So yeah, yeah, I like this. So yeah, makes sense. So let's do, let's do DSC, oh, sorry. So we want to go into Gremlin console. Yeah, so I'm going to do, okay. I don't want to tamper with those guys. Okay, good. So I'm just gonna do DSC Gremlin um, console. Right. Right, so this is gonna go into the, um, okay. So this is gonna go into the Tinkerpop um, environment, right? So we're gonna go to come here. I'm going to grab this. Okay, I'm, I want to check if this graph exists. Okay. All right, so this is initialized. Uh, okay. So it should be up very soon. Okay. So plugin activated, tinker pop, the tinker graph. So. Okay, good. So I'm just gonna paste this here. 
So I'm checking if this exists. Let's see if it's going to exist. I doubt it. So this is false. Okay. So we might decide to go back here and um, grab. Now, in as much it does not exist, let's create our. Let's create a new graph. I'm going to drop this here. Okay. So it's created. Now let's list all the graphs in there and see what we're going to get. So I'm just going to drop it. So you can see that um, we have only one. So let's create another one called voting system. Uh, system. Okay, good. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, all right. So, um, so it's complaining. Okay, let, let's change the name. I know what is going on. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So now let's, so what happened here is because of that, we uh, already have voting system created for uh, Cassandra, you know, for Cassandra Dirabi. So there might be a conflict and that was why it, it rejected it. So now let's list our graphs. Okay, good. So we have these guys. Okay, good. So now we've been able to do, um, we've been able to look into the DSE graph, DSE Spark, DSE search, you know, capabilities and all that. So now the studio, you have the ability to get into the studio and check all what you have done. In fact, you can um, write Spark, you know, Spark SQL, SQL on your studio, and you're going to be able to work with um, Gremlin, the graph database from the studio. Okay, so this is the this is the command line that helps you to get into into to connect um, to Open Center, right? Open Center. I'm not doing, I'm not going to go in there. Right today, okay. So this is another. Um, so this this is the way. Okay, I specified the. I specified the version in here. So the how it works is you're going to connect your server and your op center together. You know, then you now access your op center from the browser. Okay, so say for example you want to go into the studio, you connect the studio and the server together then you access this, the studio from the browser, okay? So um, I've linked them, linked them together already. So I'm not gonna show you all this. So I'm just gonna to go to the browser and I'm going to say local um, posts. Okay, I want to go into the studio. Um, I think, I guess it's running on 1991, okay? So I'm just gonna hit enter. So this should take us to the studio. Right, so you can see that this is showing Cassandra logo. Okay, so very soon it's gonna come up to the to the browser. Okay, so now when you get to the browser, you can be able to. So you have you can create your own notepad notebook. You know, I, I I personally I like working with this notebook. You know, it's very easy to you know it's an interactive um, environment. Okay. So you can click on this and um, work on work with um, Astra. Okay, so you can as well work with some um, graph. You know, you can work with different uh, databases in there. So um, I'm just I like to go in there and just give it a name. I say demo uh, demo. Okay, the connection. Like I'm going to add another new connection. I'm just going to say test the host name. I'm going to grab the host name from here. Case should be here. Okay, so this is the host address, host IP. Okay, so let's test it and see if we're going to be able to connect. So um, it's trying to connect. 
Yeah, so we are connected successfully. I'm going to save this. Okay, good. So, so it's asking us if we want to select a graph that we created. And if you click on this drop down, you're going to see that we created voter, we created graph testing. So all these are here. So we can just pick this and just create, and uh, we are in. So you can see that you have the ability to work with SQL, Sparks, SQL, Gremlin, and all that. So um, I will not want to. Ah, okay. Let me, okay. Let's select. Oh, interesting. So it's, it's telling us that uh, we have voting system included. So I'm just going to pick this guy. Now I can select star from uh, voters. I think that's the name, that's the name of the table. Okay, so I'm just gonna run. Uh, think, is that the name? Uh, okay. Okay, voters, okay, so, so we should be in, right. So I think the, 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 the query is still um, running. So I think that's what is going on. So by this point, I would like to um, hand over the mic back. Probably we have anyone that have any question if you have any question, feel free to let us know. Probably, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, just, um, and we're almost out of time. So just wanted to ask, you know, of the different ways you got into data stacks, uh, you know, which one did you prefer, you know, um, and why? And, um, you know, because there's the studio and then there's all the shells, there's Spark SQL, there's CQL, there's Gremlin console. Which one did you prefer? Oh, <laughs> I would prefer the easiest way. <laughs> okay, which is the not notebook. Got it, got it, great. Um, and in terms of, you know, getting the, the platform to come up with, with the Docker, did you find it, like, did you have to make any major changes or was it pretty easy to get it running? Um, yeah, it's, it's actually pretty easy to get them running. Very easy. Nice. Great. Awesome. Good work. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Isaac. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah. yeah. Thanks everyone for joining. Um, and yeah, we'll see you guys next week, same time, same place, and uh, look forward to the discussion from Aaron. All right, great. Thanks, everybody.